Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Southern Pride Podcast, a production of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I'm Rex Nelson, Senior Editor of the Democrat Gazette, and as we always do at the end of the year, we've brought in Mr. Arkansas, Skip Rutherford, Dean Emeritus of the Clinton School of Public Service, to review what was, uh, at the very least, an interesting year, Skip, in our state of Arkansas. Rex, it was, and thank you for having me, and uh, happy holidays to you and you all too. your family. You too. Uh, it's, uh, it has been an interesting year, and I think, uh, I think it'd be kind of you can break it out in different factions. Uh, first, let's let's talk about what I think, and I believe you'll agree with me. Um, what is a wonderful development in Arkansas, and that is lithium. Oh, I mean, a huge story. Um, you know, I, I went back and looked uh, at my end of the year column last year and things I would like to see uh, in 2023. And uh, my, one of my lead items had been lithium. We we had a sense that something big was going to happen. I tell you, when I, when I really got on the bandwagon, Skip, I had tried to keep my journalist, uh, you know, distance a little bit and not get too excited, even though, as you know, I'm a Southwest Arkansas boy and I so much want to see that part of our state do well. But, you know, I thought, well, standard lithium, it's experimental how they're going to pull this lithium out of the brine. Their stock prices are low. They're Canadian-based. And then... When I got on board is when the Wall Street Journal came out in about May with a big story in which it basically said, this is the Permian Basin of lithium for America. Exxon Mobil is going to move in there. Now, Skip, like like me, uh, your education was in journalism, and, and you know as well as I do, the Wall Street Journal is not going to publish a story unless it has very good sources, probably within ExxonMobil, wanting to yeah. get that. So when the big boys start getting you involved, you know it's for real and it's going to happen. And you know, Rex, here's the beauty of this thing is that, first of all, it, it's the new, it can be the new oil boom. Mm-hmm. And I think it has the potential to do that. Secondly, when some of my uh, critics, and you and I both have a few, not many, but <laughs> but but some of them say, "Well, you know, it's 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 you, you're you're going to kill the environment." I don't think so. I think where we are in twenty twenty four is going to be that uh, we're far more environmentally sensitive. We've learned a absolutely lot since the oil boom. But but here is the beauty of this that I think. And we've talked about this for years. I mean, going back for years, you and I have. South Arkansas has been one of the most overlooked areas of our state. Mm -hmm. And if we've seen, and as you've pointed out, 53 of the 75 counties that have lost population in the movement to the three major metropolitan areas, South Arkansas has really suffered. I mean, really, really suffered. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't get quite the attention as some other parts like the Delta and others, and I'm not trying to compare one against the other, but this is a really economic, cultural shot in the arm because it will bring business, it will bring outreach, business, the electric car vehicles, the batteries, I and mean, this has the potential to be a game changer for South Arkansas. Now, combine that with the sudden explosion and I say sudden back the last couple of years since the war in Ukraine started, of the defense industry in South Arkansas. On the day that we're taping this, the Arkansas Democrat Gazette had a front page story that Arkansas is getting more per capita in defense spending for arms that are going to Ukraine than any other state. There are now over 3,000 people working, Skip, in the Highland Industrial Park near Camden, hundreds of jobs available if they had anywhere right now to house those people. And so you've got that now on top of the lithium. Yeah, you do. And 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 people say, uh, well, you, you know, it's the defense industry and it's and it's short lived. I, I, I think 
what we have to learn is that the defense industry is always modernizing. Mm -hmm. And Camden has developed a niche, a strong niche, for defense-related projects and products. So, yeah, I think it is a really good opportunity. I think you look back on it, Rex, and one of the most sad parts uh, about Arkansas and defense was when Blyville Air Force Base left. It mm -hmm. completely, really oh, it just gutted Mississippi it, it County gutted economically. Mississippi County. Yeah, but so Camden is on its way back. Smackover, El Dorado on its way back. I I, I think there's some really good. I, I feel better about South Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And it's when I was dean of the Clinton School and when I worked for Senator David Pryor, you know, you, you, South Arkansas was just. Well, it was South Arkansas, and mm -hmm. nobody paid a lot of attention to it. And that is historic, Skip. That's not something that's just happened the last couple of decades. Let me give you a great example of that. I used to point out to people, as you know, I spent five years full-time heading the association of all the private colleges and universities in our state. We have 11 four-year private colleges and universities Ten of the 11 are Little Rock North. Only one, Washita, is south of Little Rock. Think about that for a moment. Historically, where we placed our universities in the state. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. And I, and, and, Ten of the 11 yeah. are Little Rock North. But I, I, I think for the first time in a long time, um, we're going to be talking about a boom town yeah. and a boom area. And let's hope it works now. Where that can lead, and that leads me into what I think is another development is, you know, what what are we going to do about electric vehicle productions, battery productions, recycling things? There's a lot of a lot of offshoots here that mm -hmm. happen. And one of the things that I think we can be excited about in 2024, looking into 2025. Is this super site at the Little Rock oh, Port? Yeah, and I'll get there. Let me let me get off of South Arkansas first, and then we'll move to the north half of the state, Little Rock North. But another thing we mentioned defense, we mentioned lithium, and I have got to mention this. As you know, I have written a lot um, about the higher education story right before the end of this year. We saw the announcement that. Trey Berry, who had totally revitalized Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia, was going to Henderson State University, which has had its problems. I think SAU will continue to do well, and that Trey will revitalize now Henderson, and you need both of those state schools doing well for South Arkansas. To no, I, I think you're right, and your point about Edge Carrier and South Arkansas is 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 very important. But what I, I and I and I think. Great choice for Henderson, by the way. Uh, but I do think that what we may see is a South Arkansas, Central Arkansas uh, connection mm -hmm. with economic development in terms of a major car manufacturer or a lithium major, battery plant. Yeah, uh, an EV that, battery that plant. That needs yep. a big super site mm -hmm. uh, that, that give credit to uh, the Little Rock Chamber for developing this for a long time. And now it's it's being marketed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think I, I could not agree with you more. And we'll move it back to Little Rock. We have seen the Port of Little Rock become just a major economic engine for this state. Yet another foreign company coming in. It was announced earlier this month. Uh, to the port of Little Rock. Uh, there's more on the way. We've got the giant Amazon regional distribution facility there. Brian Day and his staff do such a wonderful job. But it, as you mentioned, as we get that Federal Aviation Administration VOR, it's a navigation site that has been there, moved. And then you've got over a thousand acres together that you can market. As you said, they are now marketing that. And Skip, I'm like you. I don't know if it'll be an electronic vehicle assembly plant, an electronic vehicle battery plant, but I think it is primed to have a multi-billion, that's with a B, dollar facility locate there. Maybe maybe in 2024 we see an announcement. And think about this, Rex. It may be South Arkansas that will be the catalyst for the economic development at the Port of Little Rock. Because the lithium's so close. That's yeah. exactly right. And so I think there's a wonderful 
uh, connection there. But but you're right. I mean, I think I, I truly believe what Brian Day and, and, and others have done with the Little Rock Port, uh, it's strategically well located. It's obviously got river, uh, rail, close to an airport. I mean, it's got a lot of advantages there and room. Absolutely. And room. Already that port uh, Brian released a study in the last year or so is drawing worker skip from more than 30 of Arkansas 75 counties. They drive in all over the state for jobs there now. And they're doing that in Blyville and they're going to be doing that in Smackover and they're doing that in Camden and that's another issue that we have to talk about but still jobs are better than no jobs. Exactly. And 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 I, I'm just encouraged that we've got bright spots happening uh, all over the state. Exactly. And I'm going to get to a few more of those. Uh, we talked about South Arkansas. We're on Central Arkansas now. While we're on Central Arkansas, and we talked about this a year ago, I remember, Skip, very clearly in our end of the year review, but we did indeed see it accelerate in 2023. And that is Little Rock and the Little Rock area becoming a major logistics and distribution center. I mentioned Amazon coming in. They now employ some 5,000 people in central Arkansas, and that sent a message to others. So I invite anybody, drive like you're going to Memphis, get off on the Galloway exit right outside of North Little Rock, go behind those truck stops, go to OUS 70. The cypress trees of Peels Lake will be in front of you. You'll take a left. And then look on your left at mile after mile of construction going on as new distribution centers come up. Now, it probably hasn't gotten the attention it deserves, but it is a huge shot in the arm for the central Arkansas. Economy. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, and again, what's happening is we're seeing these areas of the state uh, come into their own. And I still go back to when Mike Beebe was governor, he talked about one Arkansas and mm -hmm. that we didn't need to pair one against the other, and he was so right. Um, and now what we're seeing is that if, if, if everybody is continuing to do economically well, I'm not sure we're doing politically well, but economically well, uh, I think that uh, we've got a, a lot of encouragement in central Arkansas. Yeah. I think there's a lot of encouragement. And we will get to the political part of the story before we finish up today, but I want to Stay on the economics. All right, we've talked South Arkansas. We've talked Central Arkansas. Let's go up to Northeast Arkansas. As you know, I've been spending a lot of time in the Mississippi County and turning out a lot of stories because it is amazing what's going on. U.S. Steel is completing its $3 billion facility as we speak. By this time next year, it probably will be producing steel, the cleanest, most efficient, steel plant in the history of the world is going to be in Arkansas at the point that opens. It's called Big River 2. Big River 1 is next to it. Of course, you've got the two Nucor plants, Nucor Arkansas, Nucor Yamato in the north part of the county. Now you've got a fate, uh, former head of Big River Steel, Dave Stickler, who has started a rebar company and is building a $700 million plant in Osceola, on top of all of that, but at the time Big River 2 gets up and running in 2024, Skip, Mississippi County will be the leading steel producing county in America. I always like to say when I speak, take that Pittsburgh Steelers. But Skip, who of us that grew up in this state like you and I did could have ever dreamed that Arkansas would be the steelmaking capital of America also. No, I, I agree with that. And I think it, you know, again, give Mississippi County credit. Give my friend Cliff Chitwood, economic development. Your director. old classmate at the University of Arkansas. Yeah. And, and, and give him credit. Um, because after the loss of the Air Force Base and the population decline and the decline of agriculture, you know, all of a sudden, Blyville and Osceola are on their way back. Now, is there, there's still work to be done? You bet. But jobs, the, the key factor is there are jobs. And Rex, uh, one of the things that I've seen in all the, the, the three that we've talked about, um, it, 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 Northeast, South, and Central, is 
um, the issue of housing and the issue of quality of life. And there is an example in Little Rock that's working. Uh, and um, you and I are going to visit sometime. It's mm -hmm. called the Petaway Project. Mm -hmm. They're talking to people in Osceola. And when you see how they're rebuilding neighborhoods, affordable housing, uh, it will work. I believe it will work. I've seen it work. I've watched it. Our students, when I was dean, did a project over there. That's how I got interested in it. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is an example of how you take economic development in a different sense right. and go in to help the local communities rejuvenate themselves. Right. A absolutely. And we need to do that. Absolutely. And, and, and the long problem has been in Mississippi County that the jobs are there and they're great paying jobs. But the people aren't living there. They're they're driving in. They're driving in from West Tennessee. They're driving in from as far away as Southern Illinois and Western Kentucky and working four days and then going back home for four days. So in the four on, four off. And as our Kansans, we want them living here and paying taxes here and raising their families here in Arkansas. And, and I think, Rex, that's a good, you make the, you're exactly right. But the point of economic development is both macro and micro. And macro is steel plants, lithium, mm -hmm. ports. Micro is housing, quality of life, schools, transportation. We've got to work on that. Uh, and and I, I think we have an example that, that, that we can look at. A absolutely. Let's, let's move to a couple of other areas of the state. Another one that we hit on a year ago, Skip, is we talked about that Fort Smith was the preferred site for a major mission that would train fighter crews for all of our allies around the world. And we expected an announcement soon. Well, in the spring of this year, that announcement came in. Fort Smith was indeed the site. I went to Fort Smith to do a story on that. I was visiting with one of the colonels who was over the construction that was already starting at the Fort Smith airport. And I said to him, Skip, I said, uh, Colonel, I read somewhere this is going to have a $1 billion, and again, there's that B, dollar effect on the West Arkansas economy on an annual basis. And he said to me, and he wouldn't allow me to quote him directly, but I'll tell you what he said to me. Go on and use that figure because it's already out there. He said, but I can tell you it's going to be well north of that. What we're talking about, Skip, is F-35, F-16, fighter crews, not just the pilots. A lot of people think it's pilots. It's whole crews, and it's not just for a month or two. It's for two to five years. So they will be moving their families there for two to five years from all over the world. I mean, Fort Smith will be one of the most cosmopolitan places, really, in this part of the country. And you're going to have hundreds of more families of U.S. military and civilian people to staff that mission. It's going to change the face of the old manufacturing city of Fort Smith, which, of course, with manufacturing in decline, was in decline for many years. But Fort Smith's hot again, and that's good to see also. Well, it is. And again, you know, Fort Smith is often... It used to be very hot. In the, yeah, but the, then it was in that shadow yeah, of Benton and Washington counties for exactly the last right. few decades. Yeah. But, but what we're seeing here, and I think a lot of it is due to the local leadership. I go back to Cliff and Osceola, and I go back to Brian Day and others here in Little Rock. Yeah. A lot of it's due to the local leadership. Let's, don't, let's mm -hmm. give credit where credit's due. But, but we're seeing parts of the state all doing well. Yeah. So it's not, it's not us, just one place. It's anymore. not us versus them. It's mm -hmm. not. Well, I'm envious of Northwest Arkansas, or we don't have anything in South Arkansas. You know, the day may come people in Northwest Arkansas may be real envious of the people in South Arkansas just because of, of, the, of the great development there. But that's the exciting part about it. And that's what we're going to look at 2024, yeah. I think, is, look, the boat's rising. Yeah. I mean, you go out to the old Fort Chaffee, the Chaffee Crossing area now, New neighborhoods going up. Part of that's in the Greenwood School District. I recently drove past where the Greenwood School District's building a new elementary school. You feel like you're in Benton County 
uh, Skip. There's so much development going on out there. At the same time, we finally, and I know it was a long wait, but we finally saw the U.S. Marshals Museum open. And I tell you, cultural and artistic attractions are important to a culture. So I don't want to let 2023 pass without mentioning it was the year that the U.S. Marshals Museum opened in Fort Smith and the Arkansas Museum of Fine Arts opened here in Little Rock. Both big developments for our state that will bring people from across the country. And the Sultana. It's coming. It hadn't opened yet. It's, but, it, but it's got that little expanded one. Yeah, yeah, the little one's open. But yeah, now, yeah. People, yeah, but I mean, it's we're we're it's seeing coming, though. We're, yep. we're seeing things like that, and I think that's I think quality of life issues are very very important. And before I move on to politics, I mean, I think we sometimes take the growth of Northwest Arkansas for granted. But I wrote a column recently, which I may have coined a word, boomier. I said, if anything, the booms getting. Boomier, consider this, Walmart completing a $1 billion, we're using a lot of billions today for a state as small of our Arkansas, campus that's unlike anything this part of the country's ever seen, going to be like something you'd expect in the Silicon Valley, for instance, that going on. Crystal Bridges, already one of the great art museums in the world, adding another 100,000 feet of exhibition space. Alice Walton moving forward with her medical school and her whole health institute, University of Arkansas, record enrollment. If anything there, Skip, and again, it's great for the whole state, that boom is speeding up, if oh, nothing yeah. else. No, no, it's, it's, it, nobody's losing in this deal. Everybody's winning. Everybody's gaining. That's the, uh, this is something we can, this is something very different to look at as we've looked in past years. We got all regions of the state winning now let, let's 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 be honest that we've got 53 of 75 counties losing population exactly. let's hope, let's hope let's, that turns around that's something we'll hopefully next year can say that that trend is stopped we've got three major met, metropolitan areas where people are relocating i mean jonesboro paragool northwest arkansas central arkansas um so there are a lot of haves and have nots and we can we can't overlook the have-nots, because we've got to worry about, uh, and I, you know, again, I think uh, we've got to do, we've got to, we, we, luckily the American Rescue Act helped with broadband. We've got to really worry about rural hospitals. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. If we're, if we're going to keep growing these places, we've got to pay more attention to rural hospitals. Absolutely. And what we're doing. I mean, that, that to me is one of our great economic challenges of 2024. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. All right, let's move on. I recently wrote a column headlined The Arkansas Paradox. Here in lies the paradox. A, the things we've been talking about the last 20 minutes or so. The Arkansas economy is doing great right now, and it's not just in one part of the state. It's all over Arkansas. The paradox, however, is that we live in a time where it seems to me, at least, Skip, that our political system is badly broken. I think we've got real problems at the political area, and if Arkansas voters don't start making some changes there, that at some point impacts these economic developments we're talking about. Well, and you're right, and you have made the point uh over and over again, and I thoroughly agree with you, that from Winthrop Rockefeller through Asa Hutchinson, with the trail of both Democratic and Republican governors, they governed as they governed in the center. Mm -hmm. They governed as we, not I. Pragmatist. They they governed as trying to unite, not divide. They governed without being snarky. Uh, they governed with sitting down with people who disagreed with them. Um, and we don't have that. Mm -mm. We do not. That era is over. We do not. Uh, we, we elected, obviously, as governor in 2022, a inexperienced, 
young political operative, that is Sarah Sanders' background, a political operative, to actually be the office holder. And I think the big problem came when she surrounded herself, Skip, not with old Arkansas hands who knew Arkansas and knew how it worked and listened to their advice. She surrounded herself with other political operatives. And a lot of those were from out of state. No background in Arkansas, really no interest in Arkansas for all I can tell. And it seems to me as we look back on 2023, the goal has been more to get live shots on Fox News than it has been to govern the state of Arkansas. I don't know how else to put it. Well, it's, it, it, it is a government by, uh, it's being governed by division, not by addition. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, the most divisive governor in just one year, I think we can both agree since Orville Faubus in his final year. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I, I, when you start getting compared with Orville Faubus um, in terms of, of Arkansas reputation, um, I mean, remember, look, Arkansas is doing a lot right we're we're riding a big national jobs 14 million new jobs since mm-hmm. the pandemic i mean it there's a national job wave so we're not alone in the in the job wave but what we are alone is just this constant division like medicaid reform necessary 12 month plan arkansas did it in 6 months mm-hmm. it wasn't reform it was cuts and rex of the 400 and something thousand that lost medicaid coverage over 300,000 of them were because of procedural issues, right. not because paperwork. of culture, not paperwork, yep. not having internet. I mean, if you had 12 months, you would have had time to work through all that. That to me is not, um, that, that's not what, what, what we should expect for people in Arkansas. There, there has been a pettiness to it in my mind. Um, the, the recent appointment of Jason Rapert to the state library board of all things, uh, Skip, and I'll just say it on this show. I, I I don't know how else to put that, but that was just kind of a middle finger to the people of Arkansas saying, you know, I'm in charge. I, I'll do what I want and I'm going to make this appointment. Well, again, we, this is characterized as a government by division. Exactly. Not addition. Most people in office, most people, and we've seen that from Rockefeller to Hutchinson, uh, want to build bridges, not barriers. Mm-hmm. They, they, want to, they want to work with people, not against people. They don't want to single out or call out people, and they don't want to give middle fingers to people. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think, I think from this perspective, um, we, we, we have – not seen anything like it. History has not seen anything like it since Orville Fallers. A- absolutely. If there were any bright spots politically, Skip, and I wrote a column after th- after the fact, it was during the special session, and they used the guise of tax cut, but we know there was no race to do that. The whole reason for the special session was trying to destroy our state's Freedom of Information Act, which the late great Bob McCord had had worked on and and the aforementioned Governor Rockefeller had made as uh, one of the centerpieces of his four years of office to try to destroy that important piece that ensures government transparency. We finally saw some legislators stand up and basically say, I'm not going to be bullied anymore. And if there's any bright spot, that would be it to me hoping that these same legislators will stand up on other issues now because nobody stood up to anything during the regular session. So maybe we saw a little crack there during the special session, Skip, when she didn't get her I think, way. I think that's right, and I think it, 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 it awoke a sleeping giant for freedom of information. People on both sides of the aisle, liberals and conservatives, realized, whoa, wait a minute. Um, this right to know is important. This mm-hmm. transparency is important for for government entities. I think the second thing we saw people do is that they basically said, look, uh, this lectern gate, we don't know all about it. We don't know, but it sure looks goofy. Yeah. And it sure for a 
$19,000 lectern right under the $20,000 expenditure requirement through a friend. I mean, nobody knows because, first of all, we, we you know we we saw it sitting over there in the corner of the governor's conference room and hadn't seen it since. Um, so if that was the real lectern, so nobody mm -hmm. knows. But but in fairness, the legislative joint audit committee said. Let's take a look at it. Exactly. Let's go in and do this. And if you know those committees, they, I mean, the staff of the joint, they, they're thorough. Oh, they're government professionals. They're not party people. They're not political hacks. This is their job. They're professionals. I worked in the state capitol for 10 years. I have the greatest respect for those people. I think they will at some point, and this will be one of the big stories of 2024, will deliver us a very good report. Well, and I think you're right. And I think, you know, when you look at the issues that are out there, I mean, for example, one could debate the merits of the Buffalo River National Park. One could, uh, could, 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 you could certainly worthy of a good, comprehensive conversation mm -hmm. facts. The way it was launched, the way it was done, you know, has led everyone from the Newton County Quorum Court to outdoor columnist Brian Hendricks to the Arkansas Farm Bureau to come out against it. And I think I, I think a lot of the bandwagon riders skip, but that's another another debate for another. I don't. Day. I'm just saying though. But I think I think when you take a major issue like that and you you politicize it early on, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I agree. One of the things I think. You and I will agree on that we need to do in 2024 is get that Freedom of Information Act in the Constitution where future governors and future legislators can't touch it. If we don't do that, when it comes to government transparency, we're going to be fighting this battle year after year after year. After You're year. exactly right. And I you, and you got to give a lot of people credit, including former uh uh, legislator Nate Bell, who who just oh, who's fearless, who, who's just really done a great job, and and others as well. Uh, John Toll, uh, mm -hmm. Ashley Kemp, Wimberly, Clark Tucker. There are a lot of people that have been out there very much on this constitutional amendment uh, effort. So yeah, I mean, I'm going to vote for it. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. I'm going to support it in my columns. I'm going to do everything I can. And again, I think we saw. Arkansas people waking up a little bit and uh, saying, wait a second, uh, you know, this this isn't right. We want our tax dollars uh, protected. And I may have voted for this governor the last time around, but uh, something doesn't smell right here. And uh, get that on the ballot. I, I think it will pass. Uh, if the campaigns run correctly, I frankly think it'll pass overwhelmingly and it'll be a very good Thing for Arkansas. Speaking of good things for Arkansas, as you know, Skip, decades ago, one of the reasons I got involved early on in the Republican Party when there were so few Republicans in Arkansas, we all knew each other on a first name basis, is I thought one party government was not good for Arkansas. And I think it now uh, on the other end. And uh, the Democratic Party in 2023, a party you once chaired as state chairman, showed some signs of life again with a lot of candidates. And some of them, looking at the resumes, appear to be very good candidates filing for office. So uh, uh, I, I think that's good for all our Kansans, regardless of whether you're a Republican, an independent, or a Democrat. Two-party government is good for Arkansas, and um, hats off to Grant Tennille and everybody over there for uh, uh, putting some life back into the party again during this filing period. Well, I, I agree with that. I think it's it's important, and you know, I got my start as a young Arkansan for Rockefeller. Right, uh, right, and um, the old Democrats for Rockefeller the organization Rockefeller, too. Yeah, yeah, but the um, the interesting thing about that is that I think it's incumbent upon both parties uh, to try to put candidates in the general election that are that are good candidates, mm -hmm. and and that's not always the case on either side. But what this does, by what Grant and others have done, is that it takes some of the emphasis about who can run to the far right and win the Republican primary, because now they've got to look to November and look at a general election where there's a more moderate uh, opportunity for people to vote. So in the past, 
it was the far right versus the very far right. Mm -hmm. Now, with candidates out there in November, it, it, it broadens the spectrum. Now that the nasty, divisive politics of Washington, D.C. have fully infected our state capital, Skip, I'll wrap up on this. This is not going to happen anytime soon, probably ever. But this is one of those king of the world things, if I were king of the world. Here's, I've gotten to the point, here's what I would love to see. I would love to see Arkansans pass a constitutional amendment, Skip, and take our legislature nonpartisan, just as school boards are. You'd have an open primary in the spring. The first two in that open primary would run against each other yep. in the fall. The winner would serve in the legislature, and nobody would have a D or R after their name. I think it would be good for Arkansas. Well, I think most Arkansans want good government. I think most Arkansans want people to be kind to their neighbor. I think want, most Arkansans want to practice addition, not division. I really do believe that. Um, so maybe there may be reform in our politics down the road. But Rex, as we look in the year, I do want to point out that, and I think I hope it's only temporary, but uh, we're losing a bright one in Chuck Welch. Mm -hmm. going now he's not. We're not losing him. He's going national. But 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 uh, his influence on Arkansas uh, and and the Arkansas state system, saving Henderson for one thing. Uh, but I, I, I told Chuck I was at an ASU football game. I was in the chancellor's box, uh, incidentally, so I, I was able to visit with Chuck. And I told him, half kiddingly, I said, "You got your job done. You hired Trey Berry. You're free to go now." <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to miss him, but he's, we are. He's done. He's done a really good job, and uh, and I think we c we can conclude this by saying thank you, Chuck Welch. Absolutely, a great job as president of the Arkansas State university system. Skip, thank you. We're over time, but um, I, I appreciate you. We'll have you back in the spring and we'll run through things again, but all the best the Christmas season to you and thank your Thank you and eat some minced meat pie. Uh, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the Southern Fried Podcast.